What is up everybody? This is John with Archer Fish. I'm back at Lake Kachuma. Not sure this could be my last day fishing. Maybe tomorrow we might go out uh, to Castaic with Jim, get on the striper bite, depending on the weather over there, of course. But I'm back at Kachuma. It's a little nicer today. Um, and also, man, yesterday was rough. It's my first night with a good night's sleep. Uh, so I'm really ready to go. I stocked up on a couple of supplies that I did not have. I didn't have pliers, I didn't have line cutters. And then I broke my cheap two-piece uh, sort of spinning rod that I was using for Sanko fishing uh, very early on. And so I was just, I all I threw was the square bill. So I caught some fish on it, but definitely not the kind of fishing that I want to be stuck with um, if I can't, you know, if I can't catch fish on it because the lake is super full and a lot of the um, foliage here is deeply submerged. So the bass like the deeper water here, uh, main lake points, things like that. And if there's no cover for them, it's very hard to do the old uh, crankbait for me. At least that's what I found in the last couple years of doing this over here. So uh, I'm gonna still do be doing the power bait fishing. I mean power, I keep saying power bait. I'm still gonna be doing the power fishing, uh, crankbait, things like that. I just didn't bring a lot of uh, supplies. I got a jerk bait, I got some square bills, and that's pretty much it. I want to do more Sanko fishing today. I know there's a risk of getting tangled and having to break off a lot. It's just how it is in California. Everybody knows that, price of admission. But I want to do more of that because I feel like I can catch uh, some bigger fish that way. I had a lot of big followers swiping at my square bill that did not commit, so I want to figure that out. And this is my last day here for who knows how long, and I love this lake so much. Um, I forgot to do a closeout video. That's why I'm sort of combining these two. So anyway, I'm gonna go hit a couple of spots right now and hopefully get on a bass in the shade. All right, so I really don't want to use the drop shot, but I did get some drop shot weights today and some robo worms. And I like to do that in the afternoon when uh, the sun is high and the fish feel like they're going deeper. But I think because the water level is so high, the fish probably gone deep anyway. But I just want to avoid that for as long as I can. So if you pay attention to the water clarity, it's very important as to what color things you're going to throw. Um, the main lake points, typically very clear. You can see over here, there's probably about a 20 foot visibility, maybe a little less. But anyway, the fish can see it from further away. So, and also the sun reaches down farther. So I like to cast close and then kind of work my way out and see where the fish are. Cause you know there's some around this point. This guy was a uh, This guy was um man my drive's all screwy. So this guy was somebody was hammering the bass on top. And I, and I threw this fluke over there. He's trying to get me in the weeds. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. I don't know how he's pulling the boat. And I don't have a, a net. Oh, a nice fish. Oh, I'm gonna have to wear him out. Still oh, thank you, baby. What a chunker. What a chunker. Right in the corner. That was cool. So I saw something splashing around right up against the rocks. There's a lot of shad right up against the wall. And it was they weren't going after anything. So I put on a fluke, dancing around the surface a little bit, nothing. And then I cast pretty close to this ledge here and just let it sink and bam, chunky fish. So if I can do that a few times, man, I'm gonna be a happy camper.
Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I wanted a picture, but that's all right. I got, I got a bite. All right, so once again, all these Southern California lakes are kind of similar, except for like, you know, the ones really down south, like Barrett and Hodges and stuff like that. Those are a little different, but uh, these ones like the Rocky Cliffs and all this stuff, the hills, they're kind of the same as far as how you approach them. If the, with these clear water lakes, it's really about, you know, trying to find the fish and not just casting blindly and fishing blindly. So what I'm gonna do right here, like where I was getting all those bites was that point. So that is what I'm gonna do here. I'm in this giant cove, I think it's called Kachuma Cove or something. But see this point here? Imagine it keeps going down in these layers, 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 all the way down. And the bass will suspend on each little layer depending on what the temperature is like. So because the water is kind of warm, but the air is a little cool, I'm guessing they're going to be about eh, 10 feet out. They're not going to be quite hugging the shore, not quite hugging the brush right up, but just a little bit further out. Not quite cold water down deep. So I'm going to see if this pays off and if I can actually catch some this way. Sanko fish, Sanko fish. Feels pretty good. Come on, buddy. God, I knew one of these points had to be holding a fish. Feels okay, man. He's not coming up. This reel's a little busted, so I gotta kinda take it easy on him. This feels like a really good fish. Like, he does not want to come up at all. He's not stuck on anything, he's just heavy. Good fish. The wind is not helping matters. Finally. Chunky, chunky monkey. Wow. Butterball. So, I knew there was going to be a fish on these points. So, you see this point? There's like three of them in this cove, rocky. You can tell it comes out a little bit. It's probably all kinds of stuff under the water there. So, you know there's a fish hanging out there. You just know it. They, these places that are so fishy like that, they reload. You know, the fish may get scared off, they may go off, you may catch them, whatever it is, but they reload with fish. So, I just have been very patient with these points and just had to get the Senko in the right place, obviously on this side where the wind is blowing, and get it down deep enough, um, and just let it get down deep. So maybe about 10 feet off too, and probably about 15 feet down. So, man, that was really, really cool. It was a nice butterball who was fighting really, really hard, and I finally got my Senko fish, and that kind of made the day for me. So, I will see you guys tomorrow. Another big kill. Oh, look at them all. Nice one.